Well, that's it. NBA Summer League in the books. NBL at NBA Summer League action. Olgan and I, we're finishing up what's been a very hectic week and a half here in Las Vegas. It's been a lot of fun. It's just dropped to a cool and breezy 41 degrees Celsius, which is lovely. Bit of action on the floor today. Let's start with that Wizards game because Dejan Vasiljevic did what we're used to seeing from Dejan Vasiljevic when he gets his chance. 14 points, four threes. Again, we know he can do this. He's one of the older guys at this tournament. Uh, he came on, hadn't played practically the entire stretch. Got on, hit a bunch of shots. The Wizards play again tomorrow. Largely because of that, he helped them win that game. Um, and again, he's out here. He's not with the Sydney Kings anymore. He's fighting for a two-way spot. He's fighting for a Euro job. This helps him. It absolutely helps him. He hadn't done anything up, up until this point. And, you know, I'll just say credit to guys like him who basically sit out the entire time knowing that there's a chance that you might not play very much here. You're on a roster that has 15 to 18 guys on it. You're not going to play immediately because they're going to play their rostered guys. They're going to play their draft picks. And so credit to him for, for sort of sticking with it. And, and same with someone like Bakua Maker. And look, we were going to touch on him next because he got a bit more opportunity today. He looked really good. Like the way he goes about it, I have a lot of respect for those players who stay ready. I think that's the the best part, most impressive part about it. But McCool Maker, there's a little bit of buzz now with return to the NBL. We know Thon was walking around out here as well. But McCool Maker, that's one that I've started here over the last couple of days, potentially re going back down to the NBL. Yeah, McCool Maker is someone who NBL teams are looking at because he's slightly cheaper than your, your Thon Makers and your Duop Reits. And so when I look at someone like Melbourne United, they're still sort of figuring out what exactly is up with Joe Luala Chul Jr.'s injury, how long he's, he might be out for. But if there is a replacement that might come in, if they need a, a local replacement for a temporary amount of time, McCool Maker is someone who I'm told that they are preparing to engage with. And so that's one to keep an eye on. Well, let's have a quick wrap of the week before we get into some other things. And I want to start with Duop Reith. Most impressive for me by far. I thought he looked every bit an NBA player on this floor for Portland. Still played limited minutes, backup minutes, but every time he stepped on the floor, made something happen. Where he ends up, I'm not sure. There, there is that buzz, obviously, around the NBA, and so there should be with the way he played. Stretch five, I think he's prime now to go and have a massive uh, uh, campaign for the Boomers, which would be great alongside Jock Landau in our bigs department. Another one who impressed me a lot was Luke Travis. On a team where passing is not even secondary, it's fourth, it's fifth, it's so far down the list, he still found a way to impact in the game that he loves. I think he's due for a massive breakout campaign uh, for Melbourne United and NBL 24, especially on the offensive end. But who stood out for you over this hectic 11, 12, 450 days we've been here? I think it's 11 days this tournament is. is it? And God help me me out of here. Uh, I like DJ Hogue, uh, not just because he came in and hit shots, but I like the positional versatility that he was able to show here. I think in the NBL, he's more of a 4-3. If he's going to be an NBA player, he's a 3-4, and I think we saw a lot of him on the wing, and that versatility is super helpful, and it sort of it makes me think of what Sydney's going to do with that lineup, where we might have DJ Hogue at the 3, Jonah Bolden at the 4, play, put Geordie Hunter in there at the 5. That's such a big lineup. Uh, the positional versatility of that Kings group uh, is really exciting, and I think DJ Hogue's performance here was really cool. And and on Luke Travis, similar sort of thing. Played a lot at the five, and, and I think that's an interesting little wrinkle that Melbourne United might have, playing him at the five and putting a bunch of shooters on the floor and seeing what happens. We're going to have to get close to wrapping this up because I decide to wear a green shirt and it's coming <laughs> dripping down my arms. But you got any more news for us before we leave Las Vegas? You're staying around America for a couple of days. We just had a nice little dinner behind Caesars Palace where there was a bit of carry-on actually a couple of days ago here. But what news do you have for us on the NBL front? Anything? Yes. Yeah, no, no TVs out the windows. No, no, not, not for us. Uh, not yet. We've still got one more night. Oh, settle down, Pete. Uh, what I'm told, and I, I found this out toward the end of the day, is that Robert Franks is nearing a, a, a contract in, with a Japanese team. Now, that is really important for the Adelaide 36ers, who were unsure if he was going to be back or not. The feeling with CJ Bruton was that they might have to bring him back, and, and we spoke about this earlier in the week, that there might not be a deal there for Robert Franks, so they're going to have to bring him back, and he couldn't go get the point guard or the, the creator that he wanted. It seems like Robert Franks is really close to a deal in Japan. That means that the 36ers can engage in, in the out situation with Rob Franks, and that means that CJ Bruton hasn't wasted his time here. It means that he can go and engage fully with the guards that he's been looking at. He had two phone calls in the space of two hours, and I caught him before that second phone call, and it was a completely different <laughs> CJ Bruton. He was not a happy man. But look, that's about wraps us up. What I love, this is my first summer league. The way that the NBL basketball and Australian connection has grown, just everybody around. I'm thankful that you've been a part of this with me for my first time. When Liam went home. Thank you so much for everything that you've done this week. I know we're going to work together a bit in this season. Yeah, and, and thank you to you. You've done an 
unbelievable job covering this tournament. It is a grind. I don't know if anyone at home realizes how tough it is. It's not just the heat. It's not just the stimulants around you. You're you it's a sensory overload. But if you watch Pete Hawley running from Thomas and Mac to the Cox Pavilion, it is an absolute grind. So credit to you, credit to Howard, credit to Jed, the whole NBL team. It's been a really fun thing to be a part of. I appreciate that. And again, I'm glad you mentioned Howard. Howard, you're an absolute superstar. I heard so much about you beforehand. Thank you so much. Thank you to Daz and Guy back home, putting the finishing touches on all our hard work over here. But most importantly, thank you to all the NBL fans. This only happens because of you follow every journey. You are locked in. You love the NBL no matter where it is. I'm glad we can bring this to you. It's been a pleasure. It has been tiring, but I was told to prepare for that. I didn't I completely underestimated what was going to happen. Had a lot of fun here, met a lot of people. And also thank you to all the coaches, GMs, everyone that have pulled in for an interview. A couple today that don't ex think they expected an NBL person to jump on. But they look all good to give us the time. So this has been a lot of fun. We head back to Melbourne soon. Or I head back to Melbourne soon. We're back to Australia. NBL 24 is going to be massive. You don't want to go anywhere. Plenty more NBL action coming up when we get back. So thank you and good night. Let's <laughs> go.